Hello and welcome from Buenos Aires, Argentina to this episode of Crossing Borders with Nathan Lustig, where Nathan's conversations with entrepreneurs doing business across borders and the people who support them with a focus on those that have some connection to Latin America. My name is Josefina Dominguez and I am an editor for Latin List, a proud sponsor of the Crossing Borders podcast. Sign up for our weekly updates on latinlist.com to get a summary of the week's biggest headlines in Latin American tech news. Nate's guest today is Daniel Rodriguez, co-founder and CEO of Pickup, a Colombian ride-hailing service provider that offers a variety of logistics solutions through its mobile app. They talk about some of Daniel's first endeavors, from selling empanadas at school to eventually founding his first startup smart taxi. They also talk about how Bogota's congested streets inspired Daniel to build a solution like Pickup and how they continue to grow despite the regulatory hurdles that disruptive businesses often have to face. We hope you enjoy this conversation with Daniel Rodriguez. Hey, Daniel, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being willing to do it. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be in your podcast. Where are you in the world today? I am at, at my home office in Bogota. Uh, when I saw that the quarantine was going to start, I decided to take a room in my apartment to build an office. And now I've been sitting here almost 24 seven hours a day working here. Tell me a little bit about your business. What do you do? Uh, of course, uh, I always say that I like to build solutions to people. And especially what we are doing today at Pickup, it is solving a logistics problem. Uh, from one side, there is a huge, um, a, a huge, a, a large fleet of motorbikes in Latin America uh, that they are motorbikes that they are not Harley Davidson motorbikes, but they are around five hundred head dollars motorbike. And the people who buy those motorbikes are people that they make a huge investment to to buy that motorbike. And they need, and they are looking for better job opportunities. And, 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 we, and we want to do something for that. But in the other side, you can find small, medium enterprises and huge companies that are looking for logistics service. So what we do at Picabi is to connect those points. And we have built a platform to connect and to, and to build a solution for both parts. What year did you get started? Uh, well, uh, we we started, I have to tell you everything about Pickup. At the beginning, we were not a logistics company, but at the very beginning, uh, Pickup started because I used to spend a lot of time inside a car because of the traffic. And I started to, to do some research and I found out that Bogota, the city where I live, it is the top three worst congested city in the world. <laughs> and people are losing almost a month inside a car because of the traffic. And because I like to build solution to problems, I wanted to tackle that problem. So I decided to launch a right hailing platform, but instead of using cars, we decided to use motorbikes. And I remember that the company where I was working on at that time, I used to ask the delivery guy who had a motorbike to give me a ride when I was in a rush and I was really saving time. And I, and I, and I, and I say to myself, hey, this solution should be available to everyone. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to launch Pickup. And that was two years and a half ago. We, 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 we launched the ride hailing platform that allowed us to have maybe the largest motorbike fleet from Latin America with at least 50,000 active drivers doing at least one ride per month. And we got very passionate about those drivers because we started to do some research on them. And we found out that 20% of those drivers, they were using pickups so they could be buy diapers or milk to their kids or another were using pickups so they, they, they will be able to send themselves to the college. And we got very passionate about those drivers and, and we wanted to improve that 20%. We wanted that 20% to be bigger. So we started to ask us how we could add more value, more job, more money, better livelihood to them. 
And we knew that they were doing great job in mornings and evenings where people were going to their offices and going back to their houses, but they could be doing something else on the rest of the day. So we decided to launch the logistics vertical that was a year and a half ago. So the drivers started not only to deliver people, but also to deliver in packages. And, and, and that's how, how we started to do, to do logistics. So we'll dig more into the business in a bit here, but I wanted to talk about your background a little bit. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur or was it something that came up in your career? That's a good question. Um, for me, not being an entrepreneur was not an option, I think. Uh, I had the, the opportunity to be raised in a family of entrepreneurs. All of them, my parents, uncles, cousins, I've seen all of them building businesses and I knew that I needed to do the same. Even if you take a look on my path, to my past, when I was a kid, uh, when I was at school, I was around 14, I think. I used to sell things to the other kids <laughs> at the school. And I remember that when the school route was dropped me off at, at school, I used to go out to a close store close to the school and I used to buy 100 empanadas. <laughs> the empanadas are like a fried bread, but filled with rice, chicken and meat. And I used to go back to the college and I used to sell those 100 empanadas in less than, than two hours. And I remember a funny story about it because one day a teacher told me that uh, maybe I should go with a chicken so the chicken will eat all the rice mess on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in college, I, started, I, I decided to study electrical engineer and computer science. And when I was about to graduate, I started to think what I wanted to do with these two fields of study. And I thought that I could do it at a telecommunication company. I wanted to also to work in a huge company because I wanted to learn how those companies work, how to manage huge budgets, teams and everything. And I worked there um, for two years. Um, but after the two years, I realized that I really wanted to do something different. I, I, I thought that the work out there I was not challenging enough for me, I, and I decided to quit. So when I quit, I decided to build a ride hailing platform, but I decided to do it this time with taxis. Uh, but when we, and the name was Smart Taxi. And when we launched Smart Taxi, there were already a couple of other apps in the market. So the, the massive segment was already crowded. So we decided on the corporate segment and, the, and we did really well on that segment. The company became the leader on that segment and we started to transport employees from huge companies like Coca-Cola. That was something that I didn't think I could do it before. But after a couple of years so at working with taxis, I saw that um, the other apps launched the right hailing service in our country. Uber came and the market started to change. People were changing the taxis for cars. And at the very beginning, I thought that something was going to happen about it because we have seen that the, the taxis, they have the power to make my startup. And it was unfair, not only for me, but also to the taxi drivers because to have a license to ride a taxi, it is a, a huge investment that the driver <laughs> have, has to do. And, and nothing was changing. So I decided to, to move fast to build another startup. And, and my focus was, was to build it so fast. And, and I saw and I saw that 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 people were using motorbikes to move faster. I started to do some research and I found out that people, I, I don't know if I have already said this because I was talking with you before, I'm sorry. But I, I started to do some research and I found out that people were losing almost a month inside, inside a car because of the congestion. And I used to ask the delivery guy of the company that I was working on to give me a ride. 
And the time that I was saving with him was a huge amount of time. And I thought that that solution should be available to everyone. So, so we decided to launch, to launch smart, to launch Pickup, I'm sorry. With, um, with, with Pickup, did you have inspiration from uh, Gojek in Indonesia? Had you seen it what, before you launched? Or was that something that you saw uh, after launch when I'm sure people started making comparisons? The, I, I didn't know them before. I, I met them um, when, when, when I was working at Pickup. We started Pickup, it was just my co-founder Hector and me. And after a couple of months of working, we, we, we received our first angel investor. And I say this because I didn't know anything really about fundraising process, about Silicon Valley, anything about those dynamics. But I, what I was doing really was to focus on working and to building solution to, to the problems. And after, after a couple of months, I received an email from our first angel investor. Uh, he said that he wanted to meet with us. At the next day, he took a flight to come and he came to Colombia. And in the, in the next month, <laughs> he, he was in the US, he, he created a company in Delaware, he created a bank account and he put the seed, the seed investment on, on, that bank, on that bank account. It was $250,000. I couldn't believe it at that time because I, I didn't know anything about the fundraising at that time. And he sent us the, the debit cards. And we, at, at, at that time, we, we, have, we started to continue growing, to hiring more people and meeting with more people. And also we, we met uh, another Colombian guy who is based on Silicon Valley. And he has helped, helped us a lot with all the fundraising process. He has been our advisor on that part. He has helped us to build great relationship with investors. And when we started to fundraise more money from Silicon Valley, until now we have raised a little more than 6 million. Uh, that was the time where I saw that people started to compare us to Gojek. <laughs> Did you, once you started to, once you learned about them and maybe took a look at them, did you see, did you have inspiration from what they were doing? Did you learn about um, things that they had done well or not done well to, to use in the market or, or uh, was it not on the radar? Of course, yes. I have learned from them. I think that the top lesson that I have learned from, from them is that when I started with my co-founder director, at the beginning we were a little afraid because of the government and the regulatory hurdles and Gojek was a <laughs> then, we, then we, we realized that Gojek had the same problems as us and also we received that in that advice from our first angel investor and the advice was that you have to focus really on solving the problem and in growing fast so people will love you and if people love you <laughs> the regulators are going to listen to you and at that moment that we realized that we were not the only one <laughs> on, on 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 the same with the same problem um we we started to make better decisions to things to, to think bigger and to to move faster and you talked about some some government uh, and regulatory stuff there was a big story last year with uber uh, being uh, affected by uh, government shutdowns and things like that and i know you guys were also in the news uh, what happened and and uh, how did you how did you get out of it Yes, I think that any disruptive business has regulatory hurdles, and this is not something really new. And even more in the right hailing space, I have seen the same similar problem with even with the taxi apps. But what I know is it is that we are really solving a problem, even more when we are in, in, in LATAM, where, where the Unemployment rates are right now two digits. <laughs> and people are looking for, for better job opportunities, for better solutions, and, and, and people need solutions not, maybe not pick up, but pick up and all the other apps 
people need jobs people need help to to develop <laughs> our country and we have and, and from the regulatory side what i can say is that we are seeing po in, seeing progress we have a couple of projects of law in, co in congress that are being discussed but i know i know that in in the coming months and years we're gonna see a huge huge progress on, on this space but i like to to try to imagine maybe how it was <laughs> before i remember a couple of years ago i i read the biography of henry ford i remember that he wrote that when he was launching the, the first cars people were afraid of riding those, those cars and and i think also that he had similar problems because people and the government were not understanding what he was doing but today we can see that that was something that that it, it had to happen it, it's gonna it's gonna happen the same in in, in, the, in the next couple of years with with pickup and not only with pickup, but with similar apps that are bringing um, great development to the region. So let's dig into the problem. You mentioned you know people spend a ton of time in traffic. I've lived in Bogota before. It's horrible traffic. You, you basically want to try to live as close as you can to your office. Uh, you've got the best decision here being at home, uh, not being stuck in traffic. I, I can remember being like going 20 blocks and it would take I don't know, like 40 minutes or something like that. It's just really, really, really bad traffic. Um, talk a little bit about the problem and like the real conditions, not just in Bogota, but in Latin American big cities and why uh, both motorcycles are a good option for both transport and for delivering. The main problem, the root of the problem, I think it is because our cities have grown with no planning. And as a consequence, we have a small roads and a huge amount of cars. And the cities cannot afford to have more cars. And even when, when it is busy hour, uh, the congestion it is, it is the worst thing. Uh, but having a motorcycle, it is a great solution because because they can go where cars <laughs> cannot go. And even at peak hours, the cars are almost quiet. So the risk of riding a motorbike, it is really, really low. And since the motorbikes are always moving, they can do almost four rides in an hour while a car will be doing only one. What's the biggest thing that you wished people outside of your business, maybe investors in the US or people that maybe don't know the reality of, of Colombia or Latin America knew about your business? The biggest thing that I wish people, yeah, uh, we, we started to do to do transport uh, because I, we, we saw a huge opportunity on there. And transport has allowed us to have a great company today that it is, a, a great round round rate. It is giving us great income that it is allowing allowing us to develop even more more and more options, more solutions to to the people. And we found out that uh, moving people it is really a logistics service. Also, we learn how to move people from point A to point B. Uh, we learn how to scale the platform, uh, how we could manage 50,000 drivers at the same time. Um, and we realized that the technology that we have built for transport, it is almost the same technology that we can use to do logistics. So we were already moving people, we started to move packages. And we started also to work with companies, as I was telling you, with companies that needed our logistics and they loved our service. And science, science, they loved our service. They, uh, they started to ask us to, to another kind of services like, like the option to send largest things. Uh, motorbikes are great to, to do logistics because most of the things that are being sold online 
80% of them are small things. They are shoes, clothes, cell phones, or similar. Uh, so we were solving uh, the 80% of the problem of our largest clients, but they needed also to help us to, to the other 20%. They also send fridges and coaches. And so the technology that we have has allowed us to add other kind of vehicles. We today at Pickup, we have not only motorbikes, but we have trucks, bicycles, and cars. And our clients can find a whole solution in just one platform that it is called Pivox, and, and they love it. If you could go back to when you started the business, knowing everything you know today, what advice would you give yourself? The advice would be that I have to take the decisions that I have, not the decision, but the risk. I have to take the risks that I'm about to take, but I should take them faster. And I have, a, and I could give you a couple of examples about it, but I'm going to tell you the, the most important one. And it is that when we were thinking about building Pickup, Uber was already on our market. Uh, but they, at the beginning, they were just receiving credit card payments. And I knew that the, the cash solution was also something that Latin countries needed, and it is huge. But when we were building Pickup, uh, Uber launched the, <laughs> the cash option. And so half of the, of the idea was killed, but we continue to do it with motorbikes. So, but the, the advice is the longer you wait, the more opportunities you lose. Do you have any books, blogs, podcasts, or doc documentaries you like to recommend to people, whether about startups or just life in general? Yes, uh, the top the top one that I have in mind for life in general, it is a book called A, a Driving Purpose Life. <clears throat> um, it has helped me a lot. I think that the first lesson that I take from that book, it is that uh, the author, he sees the life like a, like a light, but you have the option to decide what kind of light you want to be. You, can, you, you could be like a regular light bulb that can illuminate a room and just that. Or you can focus all a light in, in, in one thing uh, using a, a magnifying glass. And you can focus a lot of light in just in one point and you can set grass or paper on fire. And even you can think of a laser beam you have so much power and energy focusing just in one point that you can cut steel. What's next for you and the business over the next year or two? What's your goals with Pika? Sure. Uh, everything that you, when you are seated or you are driving, everything that you see, everything uh, uh, has been delivered to you somehow, <laughs> whatever it is in a, in a truck or a motorbike or in a bicycle. There is a huge, huge logistic space. <laughs> and, and we at Pickup with Pivox, we are transforming that logistic space in Latin America. And we're going to continue growing at least 300% on, on the next couple of years. It's going to be fun to watch you continue to execute. Uh, I remember in the beginning when you first launched and I would go through Bogota and I would see uh, some of the first billboards that you guys put up and. Uh, you guys were, were growing fast, and I hope that you continue to do it. Uh, it's been fun to watch as you guys build the business. Great. I didn't know you, you saw it. Uh, one of the strengths that we have at Pickup, of course, it is the marketing team. They build really great viral things, and that, that allowed us to, to grow really, really fast and healthy. Well, thanks again for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks again for listening to this episode of Crossing Borders with our guest, Daniel Rodriguez. And thank you to Angel Andraca for producing this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share with a friend and give us a rating on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's the best way to share what's going on in Latin America's ecosystem.